According to the college football playoff rankings, Wake Forest is number nine, but should they be? Have they played enough people to get themselves into the college football playoffs? We'll talk about that with Locked On Boston College host A.J. Black. More importantly, we've just got to figure out where everything stands for the Atlantic and the Coastal. Who's really on top? Let's talk about it on today's show. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? We're here with AJ Black from Locked On Boston College, and we want you guys to feel really good about today's show. There's a lot going on, but more importantly, we would be remiss if we did not talk about the fact that this episode of Locked On ACC is brought to you by McDonald's, proudly serving communities since 1965. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. It's an unofficial community center. A big thank you to our friends at McDonald's for always being there. In fact, I'm loving it. AJ, how's it going? Going, my friend. Hey, I'm hanging in there. Uh, I'm glad we I get a chance to not talk about Boston College football for a little while. <laughs> Things are a little rough. It's really just one of those. Listen, I'm I'm right in the same boat with you. As much as I thought Carolina was going to have this amazing breakout season, I'm just like, yeah, we just need to get through. Can we get above 500 and we'll just walk away on <laughs> hopefully unscathed. Um, I just recommend our readers, our listeners, excuse me, don't go back to my pre-sneeze and look <laughs> at my projections because I, uh, at one point, had BC having an offense that would rival 2007 and Matt Ryan. And um, they can't score a touchdown right now. So um, It's yeah. not your fault. It's not your fault. You thought it, things were going to go different. You thought there was going to be a different person behind the helm. So it's not your fault. Yeah, I, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's so many things to go over on today's show. We're going to start, obviously, with the college football playoff rankings coming out on Tuesday. Having our ACC top dog, Wake Forest, sitting at number nine. And a lot of people are saying they are not being treated fairly in the sense that just because their non-conference schedule isn't that strong, they that people shouldn't hold that against them. You can only play who's in front of you. And they're sitting at 8-0, eight, 9-0. Eight no, no. They're undefeated. That's what I know. Oh, they're nine and oh, excuse me. Yes, week nine. Eight, We're eight on no. week 10. Eight and no. Okay, yep. whatever. It's fine. I'm, <laughs> I'm having one of those things. They're eight and no, and everyone's wondering where in the world is go- what is going to change for them in order to get into the college football playoff. I would love to hear, AJ, you make the case for them, or you simply agree with the group and say, nah, not quite. So this is locked on ACC and you'd want me to come on and, and, and hammer the hammer, the conference gong for us, but I can't. Okay. I, I, so I look at the schedule and I look who at like Wake Forest's wins and you, 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 you're right. You beat who you play, right? You have mm-hmm. to, you have to win your schedule and that's great. Um, But right now, like putting them against a team like, I mean, Al- even Alabama with one loss, you put them against Cincinnati, you put them against Oklahoma, and you look at the, the quality of teams that they've played, and it's not even close, unfortunately for Wake. I mean, mm-hmm. I, if I, I'm going to ask you, Candace, who's their best win? That's a great question. And honestly, it would be Louisville. And that's not great considering, I mean, Lily Cunningham's having a good year, but the Cardinals as a whole, not so much. FSU, because they're turning the corner. But even then, yeah, they're not living up to expectation. They also lost a team like Jacksonville State. So, yeah, I don't, I don't I think those are the only two that I would give you. I mean, it was most the Army game was the most exciting because of how many touchdowns they put up. But even then, you, your defense got ran all over. So I'm not saying I, you're wrong here. So <laughs> I, they haven't played anybody. And then I look at their schedule and they have NC State, who should be a good matchup. And they I mean, Clemson, but I, I, I still think Wake's way better than them. Boston College. You know, I'll, that's for another conversation. And UNC this weekend, I think yeah. they should roll. I think they should roll over at least three of those teams. And NC State's the other one. But Mike, they ha- they have one. They'll have one ranked win going into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. They'll mm-hmm. unless depending on who they play, if it's Pitt, um, in the fight, that'll be two. It's just so hard to like argue that they deserve it more than like an undefeated Ohio, uh, not Ohio State, but an undefeated Oklahoma, who, um, you know, you know they they're doing well, or Cincinnati, yeah. or any of these teams that have played well. I just I just have a hard time making that argument. 
Well, you also have to look at strength strength of the conference. As much as we want to be hype about our guys, like, yeah, they're playing good games within each other, but nobody's grabbing their popcorn in Bumblehead, Ohio, trying to tune into an NC State Louisville game or a Wake Forest Duke game. Like, that's just not happening. Wake Forest isn't must see TV the way, same way in Alabama or in Ohio State, even in Oregon is like, Pack up, pack 12 after dark. I'd rather see some of those good games versus having to watch Wake Forest play Duke. Like, if we're just being honest. So, conference as a whole has not helped the case. That's why when we said at the beginning of the season, if Clemson doesn't do well, it certainly does not help the conference's case. We're saying we're a strong conference. We're figuring it out. And their demise is that ultimately, I think, hurt us because nobody, and I don't care what anybody says, nobody had Wake Forest being the top by a mile on their bingo card. No, it's because the other 13 teams have been cannibalizing them themselves for, for the entire season, right? Yeah. Like every week, it's like one team beats that team, then another team beats that team. And it's just, it's constant cannibalization, except for Boston College, who hasn't won a game yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, it, it doesn't make the conference look very strong. And, yeah. you know, the worst thing that could have happened probably for Wake was Pitt losing this week. Yeah. Because you want, if you're Wake, you want the best team to come out of the coastal. And if Pitt was like rolling and then you get in there and you beat them, maybe it's Pitt's 12 or, or 15 or whatever, but nope, Pitt goes out and loses to Miami. And so they're right back into this, you know, they're back into that meat grinder of the rest of the conference and they're not doing it. So it, it really does hurt Wake's chance. And it's, it's a shame because the demon Deacons do look like they look like, the, the class of the ACC, they look very good. And that's a credit to them. That's a credit to Dave, uh, Dave Clawson and Sam Hartman and that offense. Um, but I, I still, I, it's, it's a, it's a shame that they don't get to get challenged more so that we could see what they actually are capable of. And I, I look at NC state and I go, I don't even know if they're going to be that much of a challenge for them. Cause just, you know, they're inconsistent as well. And let's keep it a band. They were also, you know, pretty battle tested against teams like Syracuse and FSU started to make a comeback and Louisville low key should have been an overtime game. So it's not like they've haven't had challenges and sure they come out on top and that's ultimately what you want to do. That's all that matters is a W at the end of the day. But the fact that we can't even say that Wake Forest is still indefinite for the Atlantic title is troubling. That's my yeah. problem. Like they absolutely could still blow this and NC State could be playing in Charlotte. Right. I, and I have I have a thought, and <laughs> yeah. let's go back to my Boston College roots here. Um, you know, BC they got to they got to have a freshman quarterback on this week. This kid Emmett Moorhead, he's like six six. He's mm-hmm. he's learning, right? Gonna take a little while for him to learn. Sure. You know, who does Wake get at the end of the season? They get BC at home. Well, wouldn't it be so t- typical ACC if they go out there and get beat by Boston College? Of course. <laughs> and then BC Absolutely. gets, it. and then that that would give Halfley his big win. And it would completely uh, implode the conference because no one would make the playoffs. And then, but that kind I, that would not surprise me in the least if something like that, something <laughs> stupid. And it could happen this week. I mean, could yeah. Sam Howell go out there against a, a Wake Forest defense, which is awful. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, no offense. I mean, they they did well against mm-hmm. Duke, but some of those games that they played, I mean, that Army yeah. game, they they're susceptible. And UNC is a what, it's two and a half point favorite, three point favorite. I think I said on Bet Online. They, they could happen. This could be a weird week again. It's so great that you bring up UNC because I want to talk about them being a favorite. I don't understand that one either. But, you know, good conversation around this Wake Forest team. We'll have to keep our eyes open just to see how it all plays out because there are some really important games as we're closing things out. Now, college football fanatics, I know you're excited about Wake Forest. Maybe this Carolina game that's coming up against some really good offense here on Saturday. And you want to get in on some betting action. I hope you pick prize picks the daily, the leader in college sports daily fantasy all of your users that deposit and use your promo code locked on you can get a hundred percent instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars by simply picking two to five players so if you want to have sam howell versus sam hartman you absolutely can do that from yardage to touchdowns even interceptions thrown it's all there for you you can allow for mixed sport entries if you want to throw some basketball in the mix you can use this award-winning app on both the app store and google play entries can be made in six 60 seconds or less. Yes, it is that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast withdrawals. Don't hesitate. Check out prizepicks.com. Again, using promo code locked on or go to your app store and download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. 
Now, it's a place where friends and family can reconnect. McDonald's has always been more than just a place to get tasty, affordable food. This episode of Locked on ACC is brought to you by McDonald's, a place where classmates can meet up for a study group, knowing they'll have dependable Wi-Fi and endless supplies of french fries and McFlurries. Win or lose, it's a place where teammates, competitors, the home team, or the away team can come to recharge. It's the place you always look forward to stopping at on a long road trip to rest your legs and re fuel. As someone who has been getting Happy Meals since the beginning, I strongly encourage you guys to go to your local McDonald's and prep yourselves for what should be a great weekend of football. Grab yourself a snack on the way to the game and you'll be good to go. Honestly, I can safely say that I'm loving it. We're here with AJ Black from Locked On Boston College, and we are talking through college football playoffs as Wake Forest sits at number nine, and they'll be facing a really good opponent this Saturday in our Week 10 preview against North Carolina, a team that is defensively trying to figure it out, same way Wake Forest is, has a Heisman-level quarterback, even though he hasn't had the same kind of year that everyone expected in Sam Howell, but it's back to the Battle of the Sams. Now, Carolina, you would think, would feel good about their win. They're two-and-a-half-point favorite, as AJ mentioned, but recently they had two more transferred, five transfers in two weeks, now having receiver Emery Simmons and Christian Varner, a defensive lineman, decide that they're going to take their talents elsewhere. And I've never seen turnover like this from Carolina football, but I would love to know your thoughts, AJ, on just what you think it means for the program and maybe how it will affect the team on Saturday. So when you look at transfers, there's a bunch of different things that could go on. You know, at the end of the season, it's a lot of um, uh, play, play, playing playing time they're Mm -hmm. they're, they're not they're not getting the snaps that they want they don't see their role uh, as being valuable on on the roster and they want to go somewhere else and what i've seen from unc and i and i wonder if this is the case with with the tar heels right now is that mac brown has really revitalized unc recruiting like they're you know you know they're getting five stars you know they're, they're doing, you know, Tony Grimes was one of the top recruits in the country a couple of years ago. They're getting all these big names, right? Mm-hmm. I think they just got a five-star a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. When, when you bring in that level of talent and you're not performing on the field, those guys, those blue chippers, they don't, ha- they don't have a tendency to stay along uh, around hmm. long. And they're expecting to compete. And, mm-hmm. you know, when they're not living, when the Tar Heels aren't living up to the expectations that the media set, as Mac Brown said, um, these guys are going to start looking elsewhere. And, you know, it's, it's the unwritten rule that, you know, sometimes these kids too, they're, you know, they're not going to say it, but they may have another team in their ear already saying, Hey, come on over here. You, you know, that's a huge violation, but we know it happens. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they're, they see their role on this team that maybe is not doing what they're supposed to. They're not happy with the way that the future looks for this program and they head out. And it, it seems weird to me. It's I, I see it more, not even just as a UNC issue, as someone who covers recruiting and transferring for BC Bulletin, like I, BC's been good about it, but I've noticed a ton of midseason kids going into the transfer portal. And I haven't been able to put my finger on it. I don't know if it's the new transfer rules or what, mm-hmm. but it just seems like it's exploded in the middle of the season when you wait, usually get it like the week after the season ends. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. Yeah, I was reading the report from News and Observer, C.L. Brown, covering the story, and he said that Mac Brown wasn't really surprised by it with how the new rules are kind of panning out. More kids are deciding to take their talents elsewhere. But to me, like, as a former athlete, first of all, like, I have to disengage because I'm like, to me, that's quitting because like, you see it through. That's a psycho mentality that we're all right. taught, and you have to, like, unlearn once you're done, right? But at the same time, I understand wanting to be – in a situation that you're going to be your best self or perform at your highest level. But grass is not always greener. Sometimes grass is green where you water it. And I'm not saying for these guys the situation was great. Like Emory Simmons, though, you had a great last season. This season, Sam Howell's only going to Josh Downs for whatever reason. And maybe there's a disconnect as, you know, their homies aren't getting along or whatever it is and you're not finding your way. But to me, I think there's going to be some turnover happening from a coordinator standpoint that people are like, let me go ahead and get out. I don't want to have to deal with another coach coming in, maybe not feeling me, and then I don't get an opportunity to start. That's my thinking. But I don't know. I don't have no sources to check. I think you know, Mac Brown maybe has personally one to two years left <laughs> of this whole coaching game as I look at Coach Cut. Age is a thing. And like you just look at Coach Mac Brown. 
I don't think he's got a lot left in him. That's just me personally. I think he got Carolina to where they need to be back in the national conversation. But when it doesn't happen on the field, after three years, you start having conversations. All right, maybe it's time for you to go ahead and ride in the sunset, go to Asheville, live your best life. But when it comes to this game on Saturday, you I would hope – with this team coming to Chapel Hill, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, you can play with some pride. The Char Heels can't – the way they did not play against FSU, I'm hoping they can step up better. And for everyone, just to be clear, this is a non-conference matchup, so this doesn't affect, you know, Wake Forest's standings in terms of their Atlantic rank, but it's just for pride. It's taking away the undefeated golden season for Wake Forest. It's all about that. And Carolina has to either beat Wake Forest – Pittsburgh or NC State in order to make a bowl game because they're going to beat Wofford, but yeah. they have to beat one of those. And I I look at what UNC has done lately, and I don't I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility. You know, I have my my co-host on Fridays is this, this guy Eric Hofsis, and he he looks at the bet online lines and there's certain games that he looks at and goes, huh. That's a weird one. And yeah. he always says, if you see something really weird, bet on it. Like mm-hmm. go for it. Because Vegas always seems to know something weird. And it was, I think it was Miami over you at NC state the other week. He said okay. that he goes, he goes, take Miami on that because Vegas knows something that you don't know. Mm. So go with it because if okay. there's, there's always those weird ones. So for me this week, it's this, and I look at UNC and what they've done the last couple of weeks. And I go, Hmm, they actually really could be a good matchup. Now, obviously the Florida state loss was bad. Yeah. But they beat, they beat a, what's turning into a very, a, a, a surprisingly good Miami team um, and who's looking better and better every week now. So mm-hmm. they beat them and they hung with Notre Dame. Yeah. So the, you know, they put 34 on a Notre Dame team that has a good defense. So sure. against a wake forest team that has no defense to speak of, could they sneak up and win this game? I, you know, I wouldn't bet on it, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I wouldn't bet on it either. Only because I've already been burned I, by UNC enough. This, this, <laughs> every time I bet on Carolina, they always lose. So I'm just going to enjoy it. I'm just going to cuss at the TV, even though I've said I've graduated from cussing. But I think this year is brought it back out of me. Like I get so frustrated and I was reading some of the comments on YouTube and they were right along with me. They're like, you understand what we're going? I'm like, yeah, I understand because it's frustrating. You can't be that good. You cannot have all of those five stars and not be able to deliver. I'm over it. I'm over, I'm over hyping it the same way you're over Boston College a little bit. I'm over Carolina football as well. So yep. you're not by yourself. But there is still remains to be seen who is going to be the top team in each side of the division for the conference. It, I wish I could call it, but maybe AJ can tell me here after we talk about Built Bar. If you have not yet got your opportunity to have some Built Bar, I strongly encourage you. They have some great sales going on during the Halloween season, but you know, the holidays are here and we want to make sure you guys are all set. It could be a nice little stocking stuffer if you want to throw it into somebody's stocking and give them a nice little gift, a sweet treat to add to their holiday love. It's 100% real chocolate. When you bite into it, you know you're eating something different. It's definitely an experience and one that you'll enjoy. In fact, you'll swear you're eating a candy bar. Built Bar, low calorie, low sugar, high in protein, all of the healthy benefits on top of just being purely delicious. So many great flavors up to nine. And sometimes they even have some new limited time flavors every three to four days. So you have to check that website often. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off. Again, at built.com using promo code LOCKED15. We're back and better than ever with a new interface for the start of the basketball season. ACC Hoops is underway. Remains Bet online remains your number one spot for all of this action. You can go there right now using promo code locked on to receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Whether you want to do some post post season baseball action, got a little world series in you, you're feeling good about the Braves. Maybe you like the Astros. Who knows? You can get in on that action right now. Maybe it's one of your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 year. It's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online is where the game starts. So we're wrapping up today here with AJ Black from Locked On Boston College. He covers the Eagles on literally every sphere possible. So you guys make sure you check him out. But we're still trying to figure out who is going to be atop of the Atlantic and the Coastal because I wish we could say it's 
not anybody's game, but it absolutely is. AJ, who are you thinking? Let's start with the Atlantic to come out on top. All right, good. I'm glad you're starting with the Atlantic because my hot <laughs> take is my hot take is coming for the coastal. Okay. I'm, I'm hot taking that one big time. Yes. I'm gonna go with the safe pick here and go with Wake. I don't okay. think I don't see them losing to anyone left on their schedule based on hmm. uh unless they lose to UNC, but that's not a conference game. So they're gonna win. Yeah. I think they're gonna win the ACC Atlantic. Um I like you know, Sam Hartman is is the story of the year, I think, for the ACC right now. He is you know, when we talked in August, no one, we were talking about all the great quarterbacks, whether it was Phil Dracovic, Derek King, uh, DJ, we no one talked about Sam Hartman. And yeah. here he is in November and all the talk is about him as a possible Heisman candidate. So good on him. Good on this Wake Forest team. Um, I think they're the best in the Atlantic. Yeah, I, I really want to buy in on them, but something tells me that NC State is going to figure out and find a way. I think if Devin Carter can find out how to catch a ball, they're in that thing. But also, to me, it would be more telling of who the NC State is and how they're growing as a program. Beyond just beating Clemson, can you beat Wake Forest on the road? Going to be very challenging, right? And can you finish strong? That's Can you beat the Carolina team that's probably going to be playing for that uh what's it called that bowl eligibility there. Can yep. you beat them? Cause you've gotten smacked the last two years. So can you come through? So that's, that's who I would love to see on the just emotionally finally get over some humps, but I a hundred percent agree that it's going to be challenging. All right. Coastal hot take, drop it. All right. So I'm not picking pit. <laughs> I, I went into the season ripping on two separate coaches and one of them I'm going to Actually, I ripped on three coastal co- coaches. I'm going to dismiss Pat Pat Narduzzi here. Narduzzi okay. had, had his moment and lost to the U. He did. I'm buying hard on the University of Miami now. Really? And yes. Wow. I am. They are playing with a bunch of freshmen. I think Tyler Van Dyke is a winner, and I think mm. they've got something with him. And I look at their schedule. They have two ACC losses. Pitt has one. And the difficulty in both of their schedules could play out that Miami ends up winning the Coastal because Miami gets Georgia Tech, Florida State, Virginia Tech, and Duke. Mm-hmm. I think they could easily win out and get into the into the get into the um, ACC championship because Pitt has a much tougher tougher schedule with well Duke again, UNC, Virginia. Hopefully, if Brendan Armstrong's healthy, that could be a good game, and Syracuse who is a, a tough out right now. So there's a possibility if Pitt drops one of those and Miami wins out, they could be the best team in the Coastal. And they are playing like the best team in the Coastal right now. And you talk about a struggling defense, Pitt as well as not delivered and match K- Kenny Pickett's energy. And you talk about a Carolina team that still has to play Pitt. And Sam Howell is not a chump, so that could be a great game as well. That could be the one that gets Carolina into the bowl game. So I absolutely agree there. Man, I would ha- I've been talking cash, money, sugar, honey, iced tea about my game. I'm going to have to apologize. You I know. know. Got- <laughs> our, our locked on ACC fan that says that we're always ripping on it on, on Miami, hit me up on Twitter and, and give me that loving because I am all in on the Hurricanes. Give me there the- we go. There we go. I love that. I love something. A, a fresh change. I don't think anybody else thinks that, AJ. So you definitely have got the hottest take so far this week. We started November spicy. So I'm cool with that. I'm very cool with that. Well, I always appreciate your time. Can you remind folks of where they can find you and follow your work? Absolutely. I'm the host of Locked On Boston College. You can hear my morose. It's actually, it's not really. I, in my entertaining show about Boston College football and the struggles of the Eagles right now, we have a lot to talk about on our shows. If you want to hear me talk more, um, we will have Candace Cooper on. She'll be joining me in, uh, for today's show as well on Locked On BC to, to preview the Hokies. Uh, we also, um, I'm also the editor and publisher of bcbulletin.com, part of the Sports Illustrated and Fan Nation Network. You can find me uh, verified again on Twitter at AJ Black underscore BC. No doubt. Well, guys, come back Thursday because we have got a good show with Tyler Aki. We are going to preview some of these Week 10 matchups. A lot of good things going on in the conference. You don't want to miss it. And Countdown to Basketball is very real. Friday, we've got betting action with Drizzy Dre to get you all set up. Don't want to miss that. Make sure you guys uh, check us out as your first listen. Download anywhere you listen to podcasts. Find us on Twitter at LockedOnACC. For Candace Cooper and AJ Black, until next time.